So Blender 4.2 uh, just released. We're gonna see how that uh, changes things uh, with Smartify nodes. So the main interesting thing is that uh, now shader displacement uh, is supported by EV, not only by cycles. So here I've took one of the smart materials of the Smartify library and that uses the texture mixer that I will uh, describe a bit in this video. So you can see when you apply this uh, smart material to your object that it has uh, a vertex color node slotted in the mask. That means by default, if you go in vertex paint mode, you will be able to paint um, black and white, for example, black being the first texture set plugged in the texture mixer and white the second one, just like a, a regular mix RGB node where the black will use the first color and the white will use the second. So in workbench mode, the, the second uh, viewport uh, render mode, you can activate the color attribute here to see uh, exactly your active uh, vertex color. That's called color attributes in Blender. And here in your tools, in the end panel or in the properties here, you can uh, pick a color or switch between the two colors. You can also press Control to paint with the second color. So here I'm on a mesh that's uh, 600,000 polygons. So it's nearly a 1 million polygon mesh and it's still pretty um, real time. I can just paint this uh, vertex color and I have actual real displacement uh, happening in real time. And if I press control, I can paint with the black color so it will erase. And if I click normally, I can yeah, paint the second texture set uh, that is plugged here in my texture mixer. So if I increase the, the size here of this uh, texture set node that you can find here in the library, and that's basically just um, textures plugged in the, the correct output. If you look inside, here I have a curve just on the ambient occlusion to make it a bit brighter. And you can reconnect this very easily with uh, Alt, right click and drag. You can just uh, just do it quickly without even having to aim for anything. And then with Control right click, you can disconnect some uh, connections. One thing you might want to do on 4.2 is go in System and in Memory and Limits, you can put a high number here in Max Shader compilation subprocess because it will use you, all your CPU cores to compile the shaders. And before in EV, compiling shaders was taking a while. You will see like a white material for maybe dozens of seconds when you were making edits on complex materials. And now it's uh, much faster. One great thing also in 4.2 in EV Next, when your render setting is set to EV, you have access in the in the world setting to the in setting sun to the shadow and the threshold to basically have real uh, shadow casted by just your HDRE image so you can see how that improves things uh, compared to what we had uh, in the previous version of EV and here I'm using my tablet so I can paint a vertex color way more subtly and yeah you can be very precise even of this uh, on this very high polygon object you can see things way more precisely than in cycles because in EV everything is so crisp and as long as the shader doesn't need to recompile you have really instant feedback about anything you, you do and so looking at this material it's mainly using the texture mixer and this is just the regular smart shader that allows you to color your ambient occlusion. I add uh, some automatic ambient occlusion. So that's a great way to add a bit of age in a couple of clicks to your object. Obviously, it needs to make sense. It can be moss or dirt. And you have all the regular controls, like controlling your overall saturation, the contrast of your color, adding some soft light or multiply, change of all very quickly the, the look of your material and then you have some some fresnel or velvet effect that uh, here i could use the height mask which is basically in white the moss and in black 
the bricks inside the velvet field. So it will mean I have velvet only on the moss. Of course, if it's too strong, I can add a color ramp or anything to control this uh, moss velvet value. So here, instead of white on the mask, I could have a, a gray. So it just add a little bit of velvet of velvet just on the moss. You can change the color of this uh, velvet and if it's used the, the normals or not. But so the texture mixer is basically requiring as input to texture set. So it can be these nodes or any group of textures that you can click and drag even from Google image or whatever. Here uh, in this uh, brick texture set, I have just uh, three textures that are a color, uh, a roughness and, and height and ambient occlusion uh, in each uh, RVB channel. So it's just uh, separated with a separate color to go in ambient occlusion. Like you can grab this texture from anywhere you want, but you also have some uh, in the library in Smartify. And here are the normals. So this is the brick. And the moss. I have uh, five textures, and here I've just uh, changed a bit the ambient occlusion texture for both, so they are a bit closer. Because by default, the moss one was a bit darker, the brick one was a bit uh, brighter. So it meant that when they mix, you see the ambient occlusion of the moss was much darker. So it gave um, basically a, a darker moss. And so if I activate these curves, you can see that the moss is uh, less darkened by the um, ambient occlusion. It's also the, the this color that's, that's here. So And yeah, overall, EV Next, this new kind of EV2, seems to compile shader way, way faster. So any modification you do is nearly instantly uh, compiled in the viewport. So here I can change, uh, for example, the, the soft light on the shading A, meaning it's a, a soft light layer, like in Photoshop, just on the brick textures, and also change the saturations just on the, the brick. And I'm still able to paint the vertex color to add more or less uh, moss here with the stylus. So it's very precise. And yeah, this is totally real time, like uh, there's nearly no lag at all on, on this uh, super dense mesh. And I can also change the glossiness or roughness of both uh, texture set and activate or not uh, specular. And so once you've plugged your two texture sets, you can also play with the, the mask, basically how they blend. Here, if I control right click the, the vertex color input in the mask, I can just uh, use the slider to transition between the two texture set and it will use the the height map of both like the displacement uh, value to mix them logically like the moss will appear in the the cracks of the bricks first and the higher points of the moss will appear first as well so you can play with the settings but they are all kind of uh, self-explanatory in theory uh, the best is to just play with them. And like Grow will add uh, the texture too in, in the depth and Carve will uh, basically shrink. Hide Blend is uh, this uh, mask that's created by the basically a, a comparison between the two height maps. So you can see here the, the moss mask in white appears in the cracks first. And you can see also the, the higher point of the moss are appearing first like they seem to, to grow, to spread. And yeah, then the grow power is the basically the displacement of the moss, the second uh, texture. So you can basically multiply the, the displacement. Hard mask will make the, the mask uh, stronger, basically, more sharp. And soft mask will add a bit more softness to the, to the transition. And then you have the the power of the each height, so you can really decide how the how to, to dose the, the displacement on both uh, texture sets. And then the blend normal is a very subtle effect where the normal map of the second texture set, the, the moss here, will blend into the the bricks normal map. So the the first texture set will, will keep appearing a bit uh, on the moss but it's mostly visible uh, with uh, more subtle textures where it's very 
dense in detail, so we don't see much. And then you have the border overlay. It's uh, basically what we have uh, at the extremity uh, of the moss. Like between the brick and the moss, you can add a little bit of, uh, of this color. You can mostly see it when the, the transition is soft. So yeah, let's drop another material. So it takes a few seconds to compile this new material. And here it's using a, a smart effect. So you can see the light smart shader. Uh, there's just a texture set plugged into it. It's the, the same brick texture set with a light UV mapping that has a few nice options like the object or world space. So in world space, uh, when you scale your object, the texture with, will follow the world rather than be scaled with the object. And then you can make the textures bigger or smaller or shift them or rotate them. It's a bit faster than to do this uh, by hand. And this uh, smart shader is, has just a uh, an effect applied on it. So you have the overall power of the effect, the, the paint override mask, which uh, if you enter this smart effect by simply pressing tab, you can see exactly how it's made. It's just uh, with basic uh, building blocks from Smartify nodes, uh, all the mixers and smart masks. And it uses uh, the height mixer. So it's basically like the texture mixer. It will compare two height maps, two displacement maps and spit a, a mask. So here, if we control shift the height mixer, we can see the, the output, which is the mask uh, of the smart effect. So in white, it will add these uh, dead leaves. That's just also a texture set plugged in the light smart shader and plugged in a shader mixer that takes uh, your first shader and the height mixer. So the height mixer just takes uh, to height as inputs and then like the texture mixer you can put a mask that can be a, a smart mask like a occlusion or or facing uh, but it can also just be a slider and uh, like that if we if we display the the input but usually you want to control this with a, a color attribute node which you can always add by uh, doing a, a research color attribute it's a a basic node uh, in Blender. It's not part of, of Smartify nodes. And you can always put it directly on the mask or in the paint override mask um, of any uh, mask mixer node, for example, or any smart effect. You can activate or not this uh, paint override mask or put it halfway. And then when you see this arrow, you can plug your color attribute or texture or smart mask. Um, but here we want to use color attribute because uh, in uh, in red we can prevent the the mask so basically paint black in black it will just leave um, all these uh, smart mask operate so we have a facing and the ambient occlusion mask and in green it will force the the effect to be on so so if i paint green you can see it means yes so it will force the dead leaves effect and if i paint in red here in my tool panel it will force the smart effect uh, as being off to erase it and if i paint in black it means it's not red or not green it will just leave the the smart mask so the the facing upward and the put more effect in the ambient occlusion in the cracks. So this is what we have inside the dead leaf effect. So texture mixers is to mix two texture sets into one shader and the height mixer is to mix two displacement textures or height textures to blend or mix two shaders, two different shaders. So in both shaders you have one texture set connected and they are mixed based on the, the height the displacement with the height mixer and when using the texture mixer you have only one shader and it receives uh, its textures that are already mixed so if we reapply this one to compare the texture mixer it takes it takes uh, two texture sets and mix them together to be plugged into a single smart shader or share or any default blender shader like a bsdf you just mix the textures before plugging them in the shader but with the height mixer that you can find here in node groups mixers height mixer and texture mixer if you blend two different shaders together so here playing a bit with the settings you can adjust the displacement 
of the effect and yeah, paint more or less the override mask and of course you can change the texture inside the the smart effect it's just this node you can either grab another texture set like snow for example or you can drag and drop images from your hard drive to the shader editor and just replace the the color roughness height normal and yeah height alt right click you can very quickly connect things that are of the same name so here in a couple of clicks i transform the dead leaves effect into a, a snowy effect just by replacing this uh, this texture set and here for example the height boost owl slider takes the height of the bricks here and multiplies with the owl meaning uh, the ambient occlusion meaning it will add more effect in the cracks of the bricks with this slider so if i remove it i will have uh, less snow in the, the cracks of the bricks and only in owl means uh, there is uh, the effect uh, only in the, the occluded parts only facing up meaning uh, the effect will not be on the sides basically of the mesh so yeah i think that covers the the height mixer and the texture mixer that you can use to create uh, smart materials or just customize in the existing uh, smart materials in the library So here, if you need a, a ground surface, for example, you can start with one of these, the, the pavement. You can change the texture, obviously, and you can paint the, the mask texture that's uh, here, connected to the Puddleify. That's also one of the mixers that behaves a little bit like the texture mixer, but that only takes one texture set and that basically creates a, a puddle. So you can input vertex color or a texture or just use the the puddleify as a slider to control how much uh, basically puddle effect you will you will see so here using control shift click i can uh, preview uh, the, the node i want in the shader editor and i can paint this uh, texture to to add more or less uh, effect and as i paint the effect the displacement is uh, recalculated and with the height control i can control basically the the flat uh, Puddle surface, and here is the last uh, example that use the derelict effect that's here in the full effect, and yeah, that allows you to quickly create uh, cracks with bricks on any material, and to paint uh, paint these cracks with the, the vertex colors. So yeah, that covers um, texture mixer and uh, shader displacement in Blender 4.2. I uh, hope this helps. Thanks.